Hi there, I'm James Dapache, and this is Coffee and a Case Note. So team, today we're gonna to talk about two parties. Let's call them B and G. And what these two parties resolved to do in about 2015 is they're going to found a company together. And that company is going to provide in-car camera services to broadcasters who are broadcasting car races, right? Broadcasters wanna have shots from inside the cars and what B and G do, they incorporate a new company to provide those in-car camera services. Now we've got this company that's been incorporated. What happens is that B and G both allow the company to make use of some of its equipment in the course of performing its work, providing the in-car camera services. And the in-car camera services are to be provided to the broadcaster for a fixed five year period, 2016 through to 2020. And things bubble along okay. Although one of the things that happens uh, in about 2019 is that the parent company of B changes. And we march on, and I should say that the relationship between B and G as joint shareholders in the company is governed by a shareholders agreement. There are a lot of moving parts to the shareholders agreement that we won't get into too deeply here, but suffice it to say that the shareholders agreement does not necessarily terminate at the end of the broadcasting period of five years, and it allows the departing shareholders when the agreement is terminated to purchase some of the equipment that is owned by the company. So uh, the broadcasting agreement is coming to an end towards the end of 2020. And what happens towards the end of 2020 is the broadcaster essentially seeks expressions of interest. Hey, does anyone want to put their hand up for another round of the five year service provision uh, in the upcoming little phase of car races we've got coming up? Now what happens is B's parent company puts their hand up and says, yep, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be in to be considered for that. And B doesn't tell G about that, but not much turns on it. But the company itself does not put its hand up to say, hey, we'll go for another go round. Now, things start to get a little bit complex as things progress because late in 2020, it becomes quite clear that B is ready to back out of the shareholders agreement and doesn't want to have much to do with it. Whereas G really wants to press and go for the new deal coming in the new year. Now, the last race of 2020 concludes sometime in about October 2020. And what B does is come and approach G. And I'll just make clear at this point, B's role as a shareholder and, provision and provider of the equipment is providing this highly technical, arguably unique is one way to describe it in the judgment, um, this finely honed camera stuff that might take another person three to six months to sort of ideate and construct. And so B comes on the last day of the race to say, hey G, um, we're just coming to take possession of our stuff, thanks. And what G does is prevent B from doing that. So things progress. And the really short point of the way things progress is that B continues to press for taking possession of its equipment and G continues to withhold access of that equipment from B. B then commences legal proceedings and things get complicated with some interlocutory applications and some thoughts that a receiver might be appointed to try to figure out where B's stuff is, which as you can imagine for B is a little bit of a worry, but we end up moving into January 2021. And in January 2021, forgive me, it turns out that G has actually caused B's equipment to be sent off to racetracks around Australia to help the broadcaster with this whole new season of broadcasting. Now, if you'll recall, um, the broadcaster set, uh, so sought expressions of interest for broadcasting for the new year, didn't hear anything back from the company. Uh, and having that, that having happened, the broadcaster directly said to the company, hey, do you want to come in for this year? Now, the directors of the company who were G's directors were very, very keen for the company to be a part of it. But the directors who were B's directors were obviously not quite so keen. And in short, the company doesn't agree to go ahead in the new year. Now, remember, we've got these legal proceedings on foot. What B is seeking to do is seeking to have the company wound up on the just and equitable basis, pursuant to subsection 461 sub K of the Corporations Act. And there are a number of 
criteria uh, where it's possible for a company to be wound up on that basis and the court works through those. And one of those criteria, or one way of describing a type of criteria, is that if the substratum of the company has fallen away, if the reason for the company's very existence has sort of faded and you know it no longer really is able to do what it's set out to do, what the court does is goes on and analyzes the position. And the court finds sort of three related issues that sort of blur into each other. Uh, the court says, look, this relationship of cooperation and trust between B and G has sort of fallen down. Uh, the ability for B to rely on G to do what it's going to, what it says it's going to do, to place any faith in uh, G has fallen away because the court says, rightly, B's trust has been shaken by G taking B's equipment all around Australia without its consent. And so as a result of these things, the relationship's broken down and the court says, yes, it would be reasonable for the company to be wound up on the just and equitable basis if there's no alternative remedy available. Now, a significant amount of the court's time is taken up by the suggestion from G, which says, hey, look, there are dispute resolution clauses in here that we should be working through. Hey, we've got the offer for the company to make some money in 2021, doing some more in-camera broadcasting. But in short, uh, the court works through those arguments. The court finds that there is no alternative remedy that's more appropriate and the court orders that the company ought to be wound up on the just and equitable basis. I hope that quick discussion of a fairly complex case and a reasonably complex area of law was of value to you and I look forward to speaking again soon over another coffee and in respect of another case note. Cheers.